All right, do your kids play organized sports? Concussions can, of course, be a huge concern. So we wanted to get a guide for parents when it comes to detection, prevention, treatment, and more. Yeah. As I've learned, this is a big deal. I know so many parents go through this. So uh, for Caris Cures, I wanted Dr. Stephanie Alessi LaRosa. She's the director of Hartford HealthCare's Sports Neurology Program. Um, you are, I proclaimed you, but it's true. Like you're like the guru of concussions. I met you actually when I first had something here at Channel 3 fall on my head. Mm -hmm. yes. I said, you have to go get checked out. And even though I had a goose egg, it was not a concussion. Correct. So let, let's talk about that first. Not every hit to the head, even though I had this giant mm -hmm. goose egg, is a concussion. That's true. And I think that, that that point is not made enough, you know, and I feel like it's become every hit to your head must be a concussion because mm -hmm. what else can happen to, you know, just your head. But really, there are these other mechanisms that can be minor mechanisms that don't reach the brain, you know, that there's no force imparted to the brain. And it can really trigger a headache and trigger a lot of similar symptoms to concussion that mimic a concussion but may not actually be a brain injury concussion. How do you know if it's a concussion? Or not? Well, if I had more time, I could teach you neurology <laughs> and sports neurology, and we could go from there. But, but really, it's a lot of it comes down to what is the mechanism of the injury, what kind of forces were involved, and the symptom course. You know, it's really important to get a good history of what symptoms were produced from the injury. Were they all at once? Did they come a week later? You know, what what really is happening? Um, and that that does give us a lot of great information. And certainly, an, an examination in the office will tell us a lot about balance and eye movements and things like that too. Yeah, so what I've learned from uh, now having to take two of my kids to you, <laughs> yes. and both times they did have a concussion, and, yes. and, what, and both times, I think the important thing is both times they got better. When I hear mm -hmm. concussion, I was like, <gasps> they're not gonna be able to play sports, or they're mm -hmm. gonna have an injury, or we hear all these things about football. So like, uh, first of all, what are the warning signs, the symptoms we need to go to the doctor, someone like you at Hartford HealthCare? I mean, certainly any hit to your head that produces neurologic symptoms, you wanna have it on your radar, okay, that it could be a concussion. Um, but really red flag signs are things like vomiting or you know really hard to stay awake just so much fatigue um, mental mm. status sort of changes um, and just very severe headache um, any of those things are concerns you know really you can get to your primary care or the ER or urgent care wherever you need to go immediately um, and then you know in the office we can sort of figure things out from there and how do you treat a concussion that's a great question because there is not a protocol, and I hate that word, that there is protocols oh, yeah, that are out there. Protocol. Yeah, I, I know. know, I hate that phrase because every it, it makes it sound like everything could be treated the same, and every mm -hmm. concussion is so different and unique that it really needs an individualized approach. Right. And that's what's special about what I do as a sports neurologist is that I really take each case individually and I treat them for what they need. Is it the headache? Is it a migraine features? Is there a neck strain? Is there you know some other component that's going on? Their sleep problem maybe or a hydration issue. You know, we really kind of go into everything, and then that helps to just treat what they need, and then they go back. Then not everybody needs the same things. Okay. Is there an average time of recovery? I know they say if you've seen one concession, you've seen whatever, but at mm -hmm. least in my case with my kids, it seemed like in about 10 days to two weeks. Yeah, that's the typical, um, you know, it, but I would say that, again, everyone is different, and some have more of a rehab need, like a physical therapy need, than others, so that kind of adds a layer in there, and sometimes, you know, if there's stress involved or, you know, anxiety, depression, PTSD, depending on how the injury happened, mm -hmm. that's another layer to the injury as well, so, um, so it, it can vary, but, you know, it doesn't worry me that some might take more than a couple of weeks. It's still manageable. Okay, uh, you are the one of uh, the only fellowship trained sports neurologist in Connecticut. That's true. How does that's pretty remarkable? Thank and why you. why aren't there more people like you? If there's so many concussions out there. Great question. There's not enough fellowships in our country, but um, actually Hartford HealthCare has the only one in the Northeast, so I'm proud to say that I'm the program director of our fellowship here at, at Hartford HealthCare in UConn, um, where we're training the future sports neurologists, so very excited about that. But there's only eight or nine programs total in the country, so there's just in not the a, a big opportunity for it, right? So, so I'm proud to be here and be the only one in Connecticut and uh, be doing what I love and, and really spreading Did the good word. Did you know this as a child? I mean, as a kid, that this is 
what I want to make, you know, study? It's interesting. My father's a neurologist, um, and actually my sister is a neurologist, so I don't know if there's a <laughs> neurology the, gene or what happened. The they are yes. in a neurology family. That is correct, yeah. But, um, and I always loved being around athletes. I actually went to Sacred Heart University undergraduate, and I played golf in college, and I just was, uh, you know, always drawn to athletes. So this was like a really good marriage of the two. Okay, yeah. that's yeah. really cool. It, it, you know, we're going to take a deep dive where I can really go into some of the, some, you know, myths, all that kind of stuff in the Kara's Cares podcast. So definitely you want to listen to that. But people will think, oh my gosh, they've had a concussion. Mm -hmm. They can't play again. Or my son, and, and, and is there like one sport you're like, oh, that's so dangerous. People mm -hmm. think football, but I've heard actually soccer can get more concussions than football players. Honestly, I wouldn't be worried about the sport. You know, I mean, I, I'm a ringside physician too. So I, I handle, you know, things at the ringside with boxing and mixed martial arts and things yeah. like that. So, I mean, there, you know, that's a combat sport, you know, so, so there's different levels to, to the head injuries and, and what's a risk with sports. But I really feel like, you know, um, sports, the, the benefits often outweigh the risks. And so it really is a case by case decision um, with the patient to, to determine if they should hang it up or not. And, and I really don't make that decision lightly at all. And it's really not based on the number of concussions. I think that's another big myth out there. So, okay. Yeah. Well, do a deeper dive. Yeah. We're going right. to do a deeper dive. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Doc. Thank all right. You. Thank you. Coming thank up you. on